So this will be a really interesting topic. Um, this will be something fun for me because these are things that I buy um, and things that I use on a yearly basis. Um, so it'll be an exciting topic. So I hope everybody enjoys this um, and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, get out of here and uh, you can come in and shop because it's a gorgeous day. Get out in your yard and work. All right, let's get started. It's a little bit after 11 o'clock. Um, so today what I'm going to be talking about is what's in your plant medicines cabinet. So what we're talking about there is, uh, you know, we, we have things in our medicine cabinet for our health, for our children's health, for, for the health of our families. So, you know, I always have band-aids and neosporin and all of these different things in our medicine cabinet that we always go to in case of something. You know, whether it's Tylenol, painkiller, um, whatever it might be, uh, ACE bandages, all of those different things that we have um, that we need throughout the year in case we have an accident, in case it involves our health. Well, I think the plant um, people out there, so all my gardeners out there, um, should definitely have some products um, and some solutions around their home in their garage in their shed um, that they can keep just in case. And so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. And really what I want to show you is all the things that I keep in my shed, in my garage year round because I always need to go grab them sometimes. So I just want to take a second and say hello Su Susan uh, and Janet. hope you all are doing well. Um, so, so that's what we'll be talking about today is some of my favorite products, some of the things that, uh, my, some of the, my favorite solutions, things that I always have around, um, and it can vary from person to person. So I'm going to, I broke this down as like insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, plant foods, you know, miscellaneous, uh, watering, those types of things, things that our plants need. Uh, throughout the year. Um, I broke it down that way, but within each category, and really I could have broke it down by the vegetable gardener, you know, the landscaper, the, the person that worries about the ornamental plants, the indoor gardener, but I've got a lot of those tips and tricks and, and different things that I'll uh, suggest because I do them all. So I've got indoor plants, I've got a garden, I've got my landscape that I like to tend to, my lawn. So for the lawn people out there that really want to uh, have a, the best lawn on the block, then we can help you as well. So I'll mention those as I go through, uh, but I did break it down kind of into the categories like that. Um, so that, that's kind of how I did it. Uh, but as I mentioned, there's a l many, many different products out there, many, many different uh, things that we could talk about uh, within this category, but uh, this will be a fun one to kind of go through. So the first group that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be insecticides, and then I'm gonna do the insecticide fungicides, the ones that kind of cross the lines a little bit. Um, and then we'll talk about fungicides and herbicides. But before I get into any of that, I wanted to mention one of my first ones, which is spreader sticker. So spreader sticker is a surfactant. This is a great thing to have around. This makes any liquid better. It makes any liquid stronger. So whether you're using it for a herbicide, you know, if you're spraying weeds in your lawn, this is going to make it adhere to that weed better and kill it better. Um, so surfactants are really good to have, whether it's an insecticide, fungicide, miticide, herbicide, all of those sides, uh, spreader sticker is a great one to have around. And I'm sure a lot of you probably know the little trick of the couple drops of dishwashing soap, which works sometimes. It's not the best, but really what this is, is this is a non-ionic surfactant. I don't know if you can see it right there on the label, but it says it right underneath spreader sticker, non-ionic surfactant. And what that means is that it will actually mix and help stick certain products that are non-ionic that will help mix with it. So if you're using that dishwashing soap trick, it works on a fair amount of things, but it's not gonna work on everything. I think one of my favorite examples is your, um, your nut grass killer. You've, if you ever had a nut grass issue, um, it's a really painful weed to deal with, um, but you have to have a non-ionic surfactant. And I just resort to this. It goes a long way. I think it's only a tablespoon per gallon. So whatever your mixing ratios are for your insecticide or fungicide or herbicide, then you just add a tablespoon of this into your gallon of water, mix it up, and you're ready to spray. It just makes everything stronger. So this is one of my musts that I have in my shed all the time. Uh, it's a great one to have in your medicine cabinet for your plants because it makes anything that you're gonna spray on a plant much stronger. So that's a good one to kind of start with. All right, so now we'll get into insecticides. Let me just check and see if anybody's got any questions yet. Everybody's saying hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> all right, so the first one I wanna talk about is Spinosad soap. I always say Spinosad. It could be Spinosad or uh, there's a lot of different ways to say it, but Spinosad soap is one of my favorite products. Now, it used to just be Spinosad um, by itself and insecticidal soap. Well, now they're putting it together. They mix it very well. It's a great solution for your insects. 
Uh, so if you have insect issues, uh, this is one that I always keep around because for my vegetables. Now it's organic, that's, what I, that's why I love it, is it's organic and it's probably one of the best and the strongest organic insecticides. Um, so it kills you know, the mealy bugs, the, um, the spider mites, leaf miners, um, all of aphids, all of those small little insects, it works great on. It also works great on caterpillars as well. So whether you're doing spinach and lettuce in the fall, um, or you're doing your tomatoes and you got the tomato hornworms, this is a great option for you. Something to always keep around because no matter what it is, if it's an indoor plant, it works really well too. So if you're an indoor gardener, if you have lots of house plants, like look at this gorgeous one behind me, um, and you have an insect issue, this is a great option. It's very safe to use. It's completely natural. Uh, spinosad soap is an insecticidal soap with the spinosad. It's a quick kill, um, and it works on a lot of insects. So this is one of my favorites to have around um, in, my, in my medicine cabinet. And then the next one is my indoor outdoor spray. So now this one, um, I've just always loved this one. And this is just, again, kind of my personal favorites. And this is a really, really good one to have around. Uh, not only can you spray it, spray it on plants, but it's also just like if you've got roaches or ants coming into your house or any of those household insects, bed bugs, tea, uh, 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 fleas or ticks, this works great. So this is a great option to have in your house uh, to use inside or outside. So it works on plants as well. The reason that I really love it is because it's an aerosol. So, you know, it's just like, you know, your 409 spray. So it's just an aerosol. It's a really nice mist. And why I like that is because it gets into some of those small cracks. Whereas if you're using a liquid like the, sp the Spinosad soap, um, this is going to be a little bit, I'm not going to say gloppy, but it's going to be not as fine of a mist. Now you've got your different sprays on it. It's got spray or stream on it. So you can either do a spray or a stream with it, but an aerosol is much, much finer of a particle of, a, of the, the um, actual liquid. So when you use this, it gets into all those nooks and crannies and crevices. And that's why I love this indoor outdoor multi-purpose insect spray made by Fertilome. It is one of my favorites. I use a lot on my indoor plants. Um, sometimes if I see you know ants crawling in through a windowsill, you can spray it um, on your windowsill. For plants, my best advice with this is don't spray it on new tender foliage. It can hurt the new tender foliage. So you do want to be about 18 to 20 inches away from your plant and you're just doing it in like one second burst. So I just kind of go psh, psh, and then just spray your plant just like that, just like you would do with a spray paint can. Uh, but it is a great one to have around, um, especially for those indoor gardeners, but I use it outside. I use it on lots of different plants. It's a great one. The active ingredient is permethrin. It's been around for a while. Um, it's completely safe. Um, you probably wouldn't want, I don't think it lists edible plants on here, so I probably wouldn't use this on my edible plants, which is why I have my Spinosad soap, but it's a great one for your ornamental plants. It's a really, really easy one to use, and it's great for your household insects as well. So if you ever have like those fungus gnats flying around your plant, you can always spray this and knock them right down out of the air. So this is a really, really good one to have around. The next one is going to be my systemic insect granulars. So systemic insecticides, of course, um, are ones that we really need to be very, very careful with because of the bees and the butterflies, and we don't want to hurt our pollinators. We don't want to hurt our beneficial insects. Um, but the way that it works is it goes into the system of the plant, and it, whenever any insect eats the plant, it'll kill the insect. Um, so they say it can get into the pollen of the plants and hurt your bees. So don't use this on a flowering plant, but for your indoor gardeners, for our houseplant enthusiasts out there uh, that love to grow indoor plants, this might be a great option because it's a granular. So you just sprinkle it right on the top surface, just like you would with a, a plant food. Uh, it's very easy to use. Water will activate it. It'll go, into, uh, it'll go down into the soil. The root system will absorb it and it gets into the plant and it can last up to six to eight weeks. So that's why I love this one. It's a really easy one to use. Um, if it's an ornamental plant outside, go for it as long as it's not in the flowering stage and it won't be for the next six to eight weeks, then you're completely safe to use this one. Uh, this is a great one for Japanese beetles, lace bugs, uh, leaf hoppers, uh, even grubs. So it works really, really great on a lot of those insects. Um, and it's got a huge list. Aphids, so I'm just reading off the back. Aphids, lace bugs, um, let's see, other ones that are mealy bugs, which are a big one here, uh, scale. So it's got a whole lot of, of thrips, white flies. So it lists a ton of insects and it's a really, really good one to have for your ornamental plants out there that aren't flowering. But the way that the reason that I love this one so much is because it's easy to apply. So I always have one of these laying around my house too um, in my medicine cabinet. Uh, so that those are kind of my three kind of go to. Um, let's see, we've got the next one is 
my gnat sticks. And so these are fairly new to the garden center now. The reason that I bought these is because we actually used to use them in our production and our growing facility. So when we were growing plants, we used these all the time. And basically what it is, is just, as you can see on the back of the package, it's a little piece of a yellow cardboard basically, but it's got a really sticky substance to it um, that attracts these specific insects. So if you've got gnat issues, this is a great one. A lot of houseplant enthusiasts are going after these. These are really, really popular right now. So we got the gnats and then we got the aphid and white fly traps. They're very easy to use. It's got four traps in each one. They last a long time. Um, so usually about two to three months is about how much use you'll get out of these. Um, basically when the sticky substance starts to stop stick, uh, stop sticking or it gets filled up by bugs. Hopefully it's not that bad. Um, but these are really easy. They come with a stick and then you just wrap the, the, um, the uh, cardboard around it and it's got a sticky substance on the outside and it's really, really easy to use. So these are a great option. Uh, you can use these in your vegetable garden because they're completely safe. They're not, you're not spraying your plants with anything and these insects are attracted to them and they go right to it and they get stuck on it and they die. So this is a great option for you organic gardeners, for um, the indoor enthusiasts, for the indoor plant people. It's a really, really good one. Uh, let's see if I've got any questions here. Oh look, my comment section is working again. I planted a lot, so Alice said, I planted lots of flowers at my new house. Lots of super tunias in the sun, impatience in the shade, but also lots of summer bulbs and corns. Daylilies, gladiolus, dahlias, liatris also have dianthus, hydrangeas, rose. So you've got a lot. Uh, what is good to have to prevent insects and slugs eating, but not to have so many containers? So Alice, stick around and you'll, your question will be answered for sure. Um, all right, so those are some of my favorite insecticides. Um, and Alice, uh, let's see, I wanted to talk about one other thing. Oh, so this is a personal favorite of mine. This is Bug Blaster. Now, Bug Blaster is a very high concentration of a very strong insecticide. Um, it's a really, really good one. I mean, it lists on the front scorpions. So scorpions, black widows, ants, um, uh, a lot of the wood destroying insects like termites, uh, but this is a really, really strong insecticide, and the reason it's so strong is because it's got a lot of residual. And so you might hear me say that a few times throughout this uh, webinar, residual effect, which means it's going to actually sit on that plant for a long time. It's going to be there for a while. And this can last up to two to three months almost. I usually say two months in our area because of the wind and those types of things and the, and the heavy rains that we get. But this is Bug Blaster Bifenthrin 2.4. You'll see Bifenthrin in a lot of products, but it'll be usually dulled down a lot. In fact, this is a, a very popular one for um, you know big garden. Um, so if you've got a big uh, you know, tomato garden or vegetable garden, and you're, you're resorting to a traditional method to cure an insect issue, you might see bifenthrin used. It's usually going to be a much lower ratio on the, on the concentrate. Uh, but this is a really, really good one. It's a really strong one. I use it because um, when I bought my house, uh, they had termite traps, you know, all the way around the house. Well, I work at a garden center. I know what kills termites. I've got access to these products um, and I know what works best. So this is a really, really good one. This is what I use for termites. I haven't seen any termites. I didn't buy the house. When I bought the house, I didn't have any termites, but to be preventative is always better to be curative. You'll hear me say that a lot too. So, we, so I keep spraying this around my home. I also have a lot of hedges, big shrubs, wooded areas that, uh, so we get a lot of mosquito action. And the good news is I have lots of bats. So bats help obviously eat a lot of mosquitoes. They're a great organic way of uh, getting rid of uh, the, the um, mosquito population in our area. But this is also a good one to keep them out of my yard. So if I've got a party coming up or I just wanna be out in the backyard and we just build a trampoline for the kids. So this is a great one, it lasts about, I usually spray it, I just spray it out into my big shrubs. Um, I've got lots of wooded areas, so I've got fleas and ticks. And so I'm always being a little bit more uh, preventative and a little bit more worried about the kids playing in the backyard. And that's why I resort to this one. It's a very strong one, but it's a great one. It really, really works well. You gotta be careful with it. We don't wanna be spraying in the middle part of the day when the bees and the butterflies are out. But during the evening or the early morning when the bees and butterflies aren't out, it's a great one. It's very safe to use. I spray it around my home, so it's a really easy one. I don't want to go into it too much. Obviously, I love it. Uh, but why I brought this was also because there's a lot of things that are specific. So if you've got termites, this might be what we recommend. If you've got different issues, we might recommend specific products for you. But these are some products that I always have around. And some of you are going to have issues that you know are personal to you and that might be something that you always want to have around. So I always keep this around. It goes a long way. Um, so it's really, really easy to use. I also brought it because in order to apply an insecticide or fungicide to a plant, 
we're gonna need a hose in sprayer, right? We're gonna need something, especially if we're buying the concentrate, which is a great way to go. We've got ready to use, so let's go through all the different types of sprayers and, and, and bottles real quick. Ready to use means it's got the trigger sprayed on it, it's mixed with water, it's easy, you grab it and you go use it. So I always have these laying around um, so that I can just go grab and use them. Uh, this is your concentrate, so this is gonna make, you know, 20 of these probably, but it's a concentrate and then you need some sort of applicator, whether it's this or a pump sprayer, which I'll show you in a second. But this is a really cool one. And then of course we've got hose end. So hose end, you just attach your hose to it and then you can go out and spray your plants with it. Um, and so you've got those options. This is a concentrate too. So this is gonna mix with the water that's coming through your hose. It's gonna mix it at the right ratio so it's very, very easy to use. Um, but this is a great one. This is the chameleon hose end sprayer. It's got all your different ratios on the top. So eight ounces to one and a half tablespoons. So it's got a bunch of ratios. What I really love about this one is this cap in here. This means that I can take this cap off and just put the product right onto the bottom of the sprayer and it's still the same thing. It's just got the concentrates going right into the concentrate. So I don't have to pour it into this other container, but if you want to, you can, and it's not going to fit every single cap. So, you know, it's this certain size, which works a lot with our high yield and fertilone products. So it's a great option for you. You can just stick this right on and you're ready to roll. And then you just take it out. You don't have to worry about pouring it back and forth. But you also get this container as well, which is really handy because it's got all the measurements on the side. So I love this chameleon sprayer. It's a very easy one to use. It's also got three different types of sprayers. It's got a stream, it's got a flat, and then it's got a shower effect. So really, really good option here. Um, there are some nicer ones. We carry a Chapin. Uh, sprayer that is a, it's a kind of a high-end, um, nicer sprayer with metal pieces. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to use, but it does give you a farther spray, which is nice. So if you're spraying trees, like 25, 30 feet tall trees, then that one will be the best for you. Uh, but this is a very good option for just your everyday use. And because it's got that extra added benefit that it can go right onto your product is really, really nice too. So if we're using insecticides or fungicides, then you're going to need a hose and sprayer. Um, all right. So let's move on to insecticides, fungicides. Now these are the ones that are gonna cross the, the barriers a little bit and kind of do both. And of course my number one product, this is something that you must have. I was gonna start off this whole webinar with this, but this is one that I definitely recommend you having around your home, uh, Triple Action Plus. This is awesome. It is a very, very easy, very, very safe product. It's organic. You can completely use it on pretty much anything that you want to use it on. It's an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide. So it's neem oil. So neem oil is going to be on my list for sure. Um, but it's neem oil, but it's also got pyrethrin in it. And pyrethrin comes from chrysanthemums. So it's a very, very safe insecticide. Um, and you can spray it on all the listed vegetables and crops that you're using for your edible garden, but you can also use it on ornamental gardens. The reason that I love having this one around my, uh, in my medicine cabinet is because it cures everything and it can cure everything. Um, now, because it tries to cure everything, because it's got such a broad spectrum, you'll also hear that term used a lot, um, because it's so broadly used, it's not gonna pinpoint anything specifically. So if you've got an issue with leaf miners or thrips, we're gonna get you something specific for that. But if you're at home, you can't get into the garden center for about a week, then this is a great option to go ahead and spray it with because if it's, if it, it's not gonna hurt the plant for sure, and it most likely is gonna hurt your insect or fungus issue. So it's a really, really good one. It works by suffocation, but it also works by kill, on contact kill. So it's a really, really great one. I love having this around my house. In fact, I use the hose end, which I didn't grab, but it basically has the hose end portion on it. And I use it to prevent things in my garden. So I'll go out and spray everything in my yard, all my ornamental plants, my vegetable garden, everything early in the spring season. And you can still do it now. It's never too late to be preventative. Uh, so if you don't see any issues, which a lot of us aren't seeing right now, then it's a great option to go out with triple action and just spray the yard. It's a really, really easy one to use. Um, and it's really, really safe. Again, we want to spray in the morning or the evening when our beneficial bugs are not out and I'm out. Um, but this is a great option. It's my number one thing. I always tell people if they come in and they didn't bring me a piece of the plant and they say, I've got an issue. I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks like it could be this, but I'm not really sure. And I don't have a great solution for them because I don't have enough uh, evidence or enough um, uh, uh, material to go on to be able to figure out the exact solution that I want to give them, then this is what I always say. You should at least take this home because it's, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, and it's something you should have around anyways because you might need it. So triple action. If you don't have one in your medicine cabinet, you got to get it. This is my number one thing for sure. 
Um, the next one would be neem oil. So neem oil is a great one. I always have this around because it's completely organic, completely safe. Now oils, and we'll talk about horticultural oil next. Well, we can maybe talk, well, let's just talk about them both at the same time. So horticultural oil is this one, neem oil. They're both very similar. Neem oil um, is derived from the seed of a neem, uh, of, of a neem tree. Um, this one is canola oil. Now, don't go out and buy canola oil and start spraying your plants with it. Um, this is a specific type of ratio of canola oil. It's got the right ratio to mix it on, um, and it's been designed for plants. So it's been uh, you know, manufactured to, to be designed for plants. Um, but canola oil and neem oil, horticulture oil and neem oil are great options. Now they work by suffocating. So that's very important to understand is, is these are gonna control insects and diseases by suffocation. And what that means is you wanna coat the plant pretty good. So you really wanna kinda of spray the plant till the point where these oils coat the insect, coat the leaf, and they suffocate it. And it works on powdery mildew as well as some other diseases because it's gonna suffocate it. All mildews and diseases and insects need oxygen, need to breathe. And so if you trap them in an oil and basically suffocate them, then it, it could kill them. Now, of course, anything might need multiple sprays. Horticultural oil is one of my favorites for scale because scale will get into some nooks and crannies, but if you spray like a crepe myrtle tree with horticultural oil, then it's a really, really easy product to use. You can get up pretty high into the tree and you can coat it and it drips down into you know, the nooks and the crannies and it can suffocate a lot of those scales and other insects out there. But neem oil is a great one for indoor plants as well. Horticultural is a great one for outside. Um, I'll actually use it a lot going into the winter season or when, when we might have a cold blast. Uh, it's a great option to kind of uh, coat that leaf in an oil to kind of protect it against any kind of dangerous cold. Now, of course, there's other products designed specifically for that, but in a, nip, in, in a pinch, then that's a great option as well. Uh, let's see, I wanna scroll down now that I've got my comment section working. Uh, so Nolan said, would you make this available as a list? And, um, and then we replied, we'll be having a handout. So yeah, we, we always do handouts for all of our uh, webinars. So we'll get that going because I know this is a lot of stuff and you'll definitely wanna make a list. Uh, so you don't need to sit there and make a list. Uh, we'll, we'll provide that for you. Give us a couple days and we'll get it out for you. Um, so Joyce said, will anything work on stink bug looking bugs that get on squash and green uh, version that uh, gets on tomatoes, are we still stuck picking off eggs? So Joyce, uh, best thing to do is yes, be as preventative as you possibly can. Look for eggs. If you see eggs, then they're a problem. Um, then yes, we do have something to kill stink bugs. Um, I don't know that I have something specific right here for it. Um, triple action actually does work pretty well for it. So in a pinch, this would actually work okay. Um, here's my tip for stink bugs, which are actually squash bugs in your condition, in, in your uh, place. Stink bugs actually eat uh, decaying wood matter. So usually in your mulch beds and leaf piles and stuff like that, they're eating decaying wood and leaf material, organic matter. Decaying organic matter is what stink bugs eat. And that's why a lot of times you find them closer to the house or sometimes they get into your house. Um, and they're a little bit easier to control. That's where I would go probably with this bug blaster um, and spray the perimeter of my home, spray some of those leaf and wood areas uh, to kind of get them controlled. But your squash bugs, while this would work on it, this is not safe to use around your edible plants. I do have one that's called a broad spectrum insecticide that I would actually recommend for that. Um, it's a tr traditional method. If you're looking for an organic method, then I would probably go triple action. Uh, maybe even this uh, spinosad soap might work as well. Um, but here's my trick for you, Joyce, is to take a wood plank. If you have a, uh, a squash bug infestation, take a piece of wood. It needs to have some width to it. So, you know, a piece of, um, um, you know, uh, not, not, a, not a two by four, basically. You would love to have a, a piece of, of wood that's a little bit more width trying to think of what the term is now, but it's escaping me. Um, but basically just a, a plank of wood that's got a little bit of width to it. So something that maybe is like, you know, two to three feet uh, wide by, you know, the same width would be great. Um, put that down at night. It could even be like a nice thick piece of cardboard, something for them to hide under that's easy for them to get under. Cardboard would actually probably work pretty well. Um, lay that down and all those squash bugs go and crawl under there at night because they're trying to get away from predators. So they're out during the day, but at night they will crawl back on, they'll crawl under something. And so that's a great option for you. And then what you do is you pick up that piece of cardboard, you can squash them all, or you can use a spray and get them. 
Uh, so that's a really good way of kind of consolidating them all into one area and killing them. Now, of course, then you need to go through and scrape all the eggs off, make sure the eggs don't have a chance to hatch. Um, and that's a good way of kind of preventing as well. Be preventative rather than curative. So if you've got an option to use triple action in your vegetable garden, it's a great option to be out ahead of the game while those bugs are small and before they get uh, control of your garden. So great question. All right. Um, so those are kind of my insecticide fungicide crossovers. So we've got neem oil, horticultural oil, and my triple action. My number one go-to is triple action. Um, so that's a really, really good option for you. All right, fungicides. If we ever have any kind of fungus issues, what do we do? Well, there's not a whole lot of fungicides out there really um, that are really sold to us, you know, home gardeners. Um, but the good news is they're typically not major issues. Usually it's the basic stuff. It's powdery mildew, it's a, a leaf spot, you know, anthracnose, those types of ones um, that you'll get, you know, molds. There's a lot of different ones, but majority of them get covered by these two products. So that's why these are my must for, you know, especially for the landscaper out there, for somebody that's really involved with their ornamental plants out in their landscape. You know, you got lots of hydrangeas or red tip fritinias, um, or uh, Indian hawthorn is another one that gets leaf spot a lot. Uh, powdery mildew issues. If you have a lot of powdery mildew issues, crepe myrtles, those types of things. But if you've got a lot of landscape plants and you're looking to protect them, this is my go-to, liquid systemic fungicide. This is a really, really strong uh, fungicide that's easy to use, it goes into the system of the plant, protects the plant. Anything that says systemic, you don't want to use on your vegetable garden. So this is not your edible garden uh, fungicide. This is your landscape, your, your ornamental plants. So make sure you use that on the right ones. Uh, and if you come in and talk to us, we'll always tell you that. But this is the one that I always have in my home in case I see a fungus issue. It works great in the lawn as well. So F-stop is one I was going to bring in. Uh, but really, I use this one uh, sometimes even more than F-stop. Now, if I've got something specific to the lawn that I want to cure, then F-stop is the way to go. And that's fungicide stop basically made by Fertilome. Uh, but Fertilome also makes this liquid systemic fungicide, which is great for lawns, but also great for a ton of other plants and it works really, really well. So if you ever have black spot issues, if you've got a lot of you know, powdery mildew issues, then liquid systemic fungicide is a really, really good one on your ornamental plants. So I always have this around for my landscape plants. And then for my vegetable garden, I have this guy, disease control. This is Monterey's Complete Disease Control. It's a really, really good uh, organic, uh, OMRI listed uh, uh, fungicide. So it's a really, really good one. Broad spectrum fungicide, uh, for some reason we couldn't get that one in this year, so this is really a really good one. Broad spectrum fungicide is like Dacanil, which we do carry Dacanil, so we'll have that for you. Uh, and that's chloroethanol, um, and that's an easy one to use, and you'll see that one listed a lot, and it's very, very safe. It is a traditional method. But if you're looking for an organic, and I always, for my vegetable garden, I always have some organic solutions that are a little bit specific sitting in my medicine cabinet. And that's like my neem oil, my spinosad soap for insects, and then of course my disease control. So this is a really, really good one to have around, whether you've got anthracnose, you know, any kind of leaf spot, uh, any kind of disease in your tomatoes and stuff like that. It's a great preventative. So really I recommend this as, you know, go out there, as soon as you plant your tomatoes, give them a week or two to kind of get established a little bit and then go out there and start being preventative. And how much do you spray? Well, it's got the label on there. Um, so that's a good question. I don't know what the intervals are, but always read your labels. This is a great point for me to stop and say, read your labels. There's so much information on this. I will find myself reading these labels almost every time that I use the product, especially if I'm like, is this going to cure this? You know, I know what my insect is. Let me go to my medicine cabinet. I've got all these products. Okay. I think this is the one that I want to use. Let me read my label. Most of them have books in the back and you really should read them because they've got precautions on there. Maybe it says you can't spray it on this plant. So it's really, really got good information. Um, I doubt there's any kind of, it says allow the spray to, to dry for the last four hours. So it's got great application instructions on there. Um, repeat at weekly intervals. So there you go, you can spray this every week. And so that's good information to know. You know, hey, I just sprayed this last week. Can I spray it again? Well, just resort to your book on the back. It'll tell you everything. If you if this gets wet, which a lot of mine do sometimes because I'll accidentally leave the bottle out uh, overnight and we get a rain, then you can always go to their websites. Their websites have their product labels. So you just go to Monterey, Fertilome, Natural Guard, High Yield have an amazing website. They're all by one company. Fertilome is the big company. Um, but uh, this is a gr they have a great website. So you can go in there and just type in an insect and that'll work as well. Um, but complete disease control, ready to use, really, really good organic safe fungicide um, to use on your vegetable garden or really anything. Great for indoor plants as well. Uh, let's see. 
Kaylee said, I have a couple of Phalaenopsis orchids I got from moving uh, from a moving friend. One appears to have black rot. I repotted and trimmed away bad roots, but it's creeping into the crown. Is there anything you can recommend for that? Uh, that's pretty specific, Kaylee. Uh, we do have a weird product called Consan 20, which might be something to look at there. Uh, th those are usually used for crown rot. Um, so I'll have to get back to you on the specific product, but that would need a specific product. If you were going to your medicine cabinet, if I were at home, then I would probably go to my Monterey disease uh, control for that one. Uh, just because it's not gonna hurt it, but maybe it'll pause it and slow it down a little bit. Um, and I don't know that it's 100% the solution for it, but we will definitely look into that for you and, and find the exact solution. Um, hopefully it's not too far, too far gone and we can still save it. But I'll get back to you as soon as I get done with this webinar, I'll answer your question uh, in the comments section. So good question. And some of those, I need to do a little bit of research. You know, I've got a lot of broad knowledge or a, a little bit of knowledge into a lot of uh, specific areas, but I'll find out the answer for you. Um, and we'll get back to you. I've got an amazing uh, guy here named Brendan. He is our, our garden expert uh, when it comes to insects and diseases. And I'll ask him and see if he's got an answer for you. And we'll get back to you. But great question. I love those questions because now I get to learn something new. Um, the possibilities are endless on everything that you can learn here. All right. Uh, let's see. The next one is... Uh, so those are kind of my fungicides. Those are my two fungicides, my systemic for my ornamentals and my disease control for my edibles, but also indoor plants and, and things like that that I'm not quite sure about or that I want to be careful about and not use a systemic product on. Um, all right, so let's go to my lawn people, but also just anybody. I mean, a gardener might need these as well, especially even a vegetable gardener or landscape. Uh, when you're looking at your landscape and your ornamental plants, um, you know, flower gardens, uh, butterfly gardens, sometimes you need to kill weeds, right? And weeds are a problem. So herbicides is my next category. Um, so what I like to show first is my kills all. This is my old bread and butter, you know, killing agent. This is a non-selective. It's going to kill whatever it touches. Uh, it's a really, really good one to have around. Uh, it kills quick. So it's just like Roundup. You know, if you're spraying your cracks in your concrete, uh, if you've got a couple weeds here and there, it's a really, really simple, easy way to kill weeds. Now, if you don't want to use it because you're worried about the Roundup issue, um, but that really is, again, you know, the science has really proven that that is uh, for people that are massively spraying it or spray it every single day. If you're just going out to spray a couple weeds in your concrete, this is a great option. It's fast. It's effective. Sometimes we got to resort to tra traditional methods to kill weeds. Like if I'm going to go out and do a new landscape bed, I might use something like Kills All to go out. Or if I'm renovating my lawn, I might use Kills All to kill it all because I know it's going to be effective. It's going to be fast and I can replant very quickly. So Kills All is one that I always have around. It's a great option to kill those weeds. Now, if you want to be organic and you want to be safe, we always have you covered here. Of course, this is our non-selective natural guard grass and weed killer. So it works by the same uh, idea of the kills all quick, except for it doesn't have the glyphosate in it. Um, and this is a really, really easy one. It basically is just going to burn the foliage. So when you're talking about organics, um, when it, we're talking about weed killing organics, they're just going to burn the top growth. Now the root system might still live. And so you just want to kind of stay on top of it. If you keep killing the top, eventually the bottom is going to die because the top is what produces food for the roots, right? But if we kill the top and we keep on killing it, then this will work really, really well. It's great for just a quick kill for an easy one. I love this in my vegetable garden. I don't want to use any kind of traditional methods as much as I possibly can in my vegetable garden. Then I always resort to this guy just to go through and spray some of those weeds. If you get them when they're young, it's really, really easy. So after you get your vegetable garden prepared um, and you're planting all your tomatoes and squash and everything, watch for weeds. Always inspect your garden. It's a very, very important practice. Go out there and inspect it for those squash bugs. For weeds popping up and you can use this as a quick kill it's very very effective and very very safe just don't spray your vegetable plants because uh, it'll kill them so this one works uh, really really well great point for me to explain how herbicides work I think this is very good knowledge to know um, is herbicides work through the leaf structure right so herbicides you spray on the leaves of the plants and that's typically why when we're talking about lawn weed killers um, that we say do it in between mowings because we want the weeds to be somewhat bigger we want there to be more leaf size so that when that spray hits the leaf it can work its way into the system down to the root system and kill the plant kill the weed um, so that's how herbicides work i brought that up because Weed free zone is my go-to for my lawn people out there. So everybody that has a lawn, you should get a bottle of weed free zone. It's a great uh, weed killer for can uh, for you know your chickweed, your henbit, your clovers, all of your broadleaf weeds. Now it's not going to kill your crabgrass. I get that. 
and crabgrass season is, is coming quicker than you think. Um, but this is a great option to have. And the reason I love it is because you can use it on any type of grass. And that is one thing that we're discovering in this area is lots of people are growing lots of different types of grasses. So whether it's St. Augustine, Zoysia, Centipede, Fescue, whatever it might be, this one is completely safe. Plus, the reason that I love this one is it works as long as the temperatures are above 45 degrees. And what that means is if we get a warm day in the winter and I want to go out and spray some weeds, I can use this. As long as the temperatures are above 45, there's no rain in the forecast for three hours, and the sun is out, this is going to work great for you. So you want those three things, and then of course you want to do it in between mowings. But I always have a bottle of Weed Free Zone because I know it's safe for any type of grass, and it's very easy to use. Now there's specific things for crabgrass and for specific lawns like St. Augustine that need specific products. And so again, if you're one of those people that have specific needs, your, your plant medicine cabinet is going to be different than mine. Um, but so like if you're a St. Augustine person, you got St. Augustine lawn, you might want to have a bottle of atrazine laying around because atrazine is your weed killer of choice most likely. But weed free zone for you St. Augustine people, it's a good one to have too because in that cool season, it's a great option uh, to go out there and spray some weeds. And my last herbicide is a different one. You know how I just explained all of the ways that herbicides work is through the leaf structure? This is different. So if I'm going out and clearing a section, and or I've cut down a, a like you know maybe a wild holly tree or some sort of weed tree that grew up and you know I've got a lot of wooded areas so I'm going out sometimes and I'm trying to clear a section to plant new plants. Um, this is a great solution to have. Plus for those vine people, if you've got vines that are suckering up through your bushes, coming up through all your bushes, um, and you're having a hard time killing them, one option: pull them out, spray them with kills all, let that work all the way down to the root system or you can use this brush and stump killer. Now it used to say brush killer, stump killer, and vine killer. Now it just says brush killer and stump killer. But I don't know if I can do this without spilling it. It comes with a brush on it. And so now you can brush this right onto that open wound. So this is gonna work differently. We're gonna actually cut the tree. We're gonna cut the shrub. We're gonna cut whatever it is that we're taking out. We don't wanna dig up the root uh, system if, if we don't have the time or we don't have the ability to do it. Then you can rub this on there. You can put, you know, take a, 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 a rag or something and rub it onto the open wound. You wanna do it fairly quickly. So we wanna get it fairly quickly. I use this a lot. I cut down a crepe myrtle in my yard. I hated to do it, but I had to do it. Um, and so when I took, cut down the crepe myrtle, I knew that I needed to get this on that open wound fairly quickly because I didn't want the crepe myrtle to try and come back and start suckering up and shooting uh, new shoots out. And so this was a great option, but it works great for vines. So when you go and cut a vine and you got that open wound, then you just take this little dabber right here and you just dab that right on to the open wound and that'll kill it to the root system. So great for ivy, great for poison ivy, honeysuckle, wild honeysuckle, whatever it might be that's kind of invasive uh, in getting in your way of, of having a good landscape, this is a great option for you. Now this is a traditional method. You won't probably want to use it in your vegetable garden. Um, I don't think you'll have an issue that you'll need to use this in your vegetable garden, but it's a great option uh, for those ornamental landscapes out there. Really, really good one to have around. I always have a bottle just because it's easy to use. I can cut and then I can dab it right on the open wound and it'll kill it. So that's a really, really good one. And that's oh, one more for my herbicides. Um, actually, a couple more things. This is Dimension. So this is my high yield turf and ornamental weed and grass stopper. Long name, right? Dimension is what we call it here. So Dimension is a really, really good pre-emergent. So we've talked about all my herbicides that we can spray. Those are great for your post-emergent. Oh, something came up. If you want to be preventative, I always have this around. Uh, it's a great one to put down when you're before you apply mulch in your ornamental gardens. This is, so turf and ornamental is what it says. It doesn't say vegetable garden. We've got different ones for vegetable gardeners out there if you want to use them, like preen or um, we've got treflan and we've got uh, corn gluten, which is a great uh, organic option. But Dimension is the one for my ornamental sections. Gravel driveways, I used to have a gravel driveway. I used it in all the time because it wasn't the best gravel and it had lots of dirt and silt in it and weeds were growing in there all the time. So you kill the weeds. If you kill weeds, most likely weeds are weeds because they seed very quickly. So when you kill a weed, all those seeds that might be on that plant are falling back into the ground and they're regrowing. You're sitting there saying this weed killer doesn't work. Well, the weed killer works. You just got to prevent the seeds from coming back. And that's what this does. So you don't want to use this in an area where you might be planting seeds. So if you're doing a lawn and you're about to seed your lawn, you don't want to use this, but it's great for your lawn when you're not seeding. It lasts about two months in our area. 
says two to three months on the package is about two months in this area but dimension is awesome uh, it works great i use it in my flower beds i use it in my lawn i use it all over the place where i am not going to be growing edible plants but it's a really really good one and it's great if you just killed a section go ahead and apply it if you're about to mulch go ahead and put it down you can put this on top of mulch so if you've already mulched don't worry it's not too late you can put it right on top it works right down through the mulch um, but it's a great option if you think about it before you mulch because it kind of holds it in place a little bit longer um, but it's a really really good one it's easy to apply and it's inexpensive that's what i love about it. it's 14.99 i think 14.99 it's designed for lawns so it does 5,000 square feet which means man if i'm just using this in my flower beds then it can cover me for maybe a year or two so it's a really really good thing i always have it around and you know how when you plant a plant like let's say oh i've got a new spot i can plant a shrub and then you plant it and you get all these weeds growing right around that plant it's because you just disturb the soil so when you disturb that soil you brought weed seeds that were way too deep to germinate you brought them up to germination level you mixed your soil you amended it you put in your compost your perlite you did everything right and now you've created a great place for weeds to grow even though it's right around that edge where you backfilled they can still grow from there so when i plant a shrub or a perennial or anything ornamental then i always take a handful of that put it right around the outside it's not going to hurt the plant it's just going to prevent those seeds from germinating that now i've brought up to germination level so it's always a good one to have around now this is a great point for me to bring in my handheld spreader i always recommend having one of these too because if i want to go out and spread something real quick and i don't need you know i'm not doing my lawn i just want to do a flower bed or i just want to do something small i can take my turf and ornamental weed and grass sapper my dimension put it in here and go out there and spread it very easily. So I always have one of these handy. It's a very easy thing to go out there and spread your things with, uh, spread your granular products with, uh, especially when you're trying to broadcast. Now, if you want a weed and you need to, you know, you need to get some weeds down real quick. Um, if you got company coming over, you don't have time to wait for kills all or the the um, the natural guard weed uh, weed killer to work real quick. Then. This is my weed slice. This is my number one tool nowadays. I love this tool. It is absolutely awesome. It slices through the ground, cuts those roots right off, kills the uh, weed very quickly, knocks it down very quickly. Now, weeds can grow from roots very easily. So yes, they can come back. And so this is not gonna be 100% weed killer, but it's a great way to knock those weeds down real quick. It's awesome for your vegetable garden. Um, you just gotta be careful around the root system of your desirable plants. But other than that, it's very, very easy. It's a very, very sharp blade, cuts right through. You can use this in gravel areas. You can use this in a lawn. You can use this in a flower bed. It's very, very easy. It's got a long handle. It'll save your back. It is an awesome tool. So for my weeders out there that hate to weed, um, this is a great option for you. To use that weed slice so that covers the weeds the herbicides my lawn people um, so that's a really really good option one last tip that i will tell you i got two more things real quick before we move on to the next subject um, is for the lawn people out there for people that are working on the grass try and always get a little bit of extra grass seed have a little bit of extra grass seed laying around so i grab this bag but at home i'll usually save it in a ziploc bag i'll zip it up you know try and get some of the air out of it put it in a nice dark dry place yes germination is going to go down over the years but it's always good to have a little bit in case you need it for a real quick fix you know my dog you know you know dug up a patch and so i need to go out and spread some no matter what it is now saint augustine customers unfortunately it's only grown by plugs but for centipede zoysia bermuda and fescue people always save a little bit of seed just have a little bit as a backup so that you can always throw it down it's one of those things that i keep in my medicine cabinet for my plants because for my lawn i always might need a quick little fix and sometimes i can't get in and get that same grass seed real quick so always save a little bit if you can even if it's just a couple handfuls that might be all you ever need uh, but maybe sometimes when you buy your lawn kit in the fall get a five pound bag just to have just in case you because sometimes you're like man i wish i had had that uh, it would have been great to kind of put down some grass seed um, and then the last thing is a pump sprayer you know i mentioned it earlier gotta have a pump sprayer i think i probably have three of these now um, in fact i just invested in a backpack sprayer uh, because my property is a little bit bigger and so i don't want to you know go back to the hose and fill these up all the time we carry backpack sprayers now 
but I always love these little handheld one gallon pump sprayers. They're super, super easy to use. You should have a bunch of them. I have three because I have one for insecticides, I have one for fungicides, and I have one for herbicides. Um, and so it's a really, really good thing to have around. Uh, they're inexpensive, they last a long time. Clean them out and they stay for, then they'll, they'll last you a long time. And this is one of my favorites, the Solo Basic Sprayer. It's very, very easy to use, very efficient, um, and it's really lightweight. And you just pump it up and you go out there and you spray. So always have a pump sprayer laying around just in case too. Hey Wendy, Wendy said, question about winter storage of all these things, especially liquids. Should they be prevented from freezing? Garden sheds and garages allow everything to freeze. Well, so yes, um, I keep saying my shed, but really my garage is where I keep them. And my garage doesn't freeze. Um, so my, my garage rarely gets below 40 degrees. Um, but if you're worried about that, then yes, you don't want these to freeze. Now, most of these are gonna freeze at a much lower temperature than 32 degrees, but not much lower. So if you're worried about it, then definitely store them inside, maybe put them in a container, bring them in like a big Rubbermaid container, bring them indoors somewhere, somewhere that you can keep them from freezing. You do not want them to freeze for sure. Uh, so great point, Wendy. We don't want these products to freeze. And granular products, you don't wanna get wet. So when we start talking about plant foods here in a second, you won't want those to get wet. Uh, my next topic is repellents. So you wouldn't want this to get wet. Now, a lot of them have good storage containers and sometimes potency does go down over time. I think I pulled out an old bottle of seven the other day uh, to try and use and it was like super gloppy and I just kind of got rid of that uh, because uh, those sometimes products will get old over time, but it's good to have them around. And if you're a frequent gardener, Wendy, I know you are, and some of us out there that uh, we're always out in our yards working in them, it's nice to have some of these things to go and grab and get uh, real quick. Uh, but good point, Wendy, we don't wanna let them freeze. All right, so repellents. And I brought repellents just because a lot of customers come in sometimes and they say, I don't know what it is, but something is definitely eating my plants. I don't know what it is. Well, I always give them the animal repellent. So this works great for squirrels, rabbits, deers, you know, groundhogs, let's say groundhogs, which we don't have a lot in this area, but lots of herbivores. And herbivores, of course, eat our plants. And so this is a great option because it all works on smell. It's completely safe. It's completely organic. It's very, very easy to use. You just sprinkle it around and it kind of repels those varmints from eating our plants. Our hard work is going down uh, with these uh, uh, animals. So this is a very, very safe one. It's not gonna kill them, it's not gonna hurt them, it just repels them. And so this is one that I always have in my uh, medicine cabinet just in case. So if I plant a vegetable garden and then all of a sudden I notice that something's nibbling on it, then I can go out there and use this right away. Um, now I wanna go back real quick, real quick because I know that um, Alice asked at the very beginning about um, all of her different plants and being preventative. Uh, and so that's the triple action, Alice. I didn't, I didn't want to miss your slug comment. Uh, I did not bring a slug uh, uh, killer in here, but we do have a very good, we've got two slug killers, one that is completely or organic and one that's traditional. Uh, they both work actually very, very well. Uh, they both go a long way. They're both granular, so you just sprinkle them around your plants. Now slugs are gonna live, Alice, underneath things. So if you got lots of containers, which it sounds like you do, if you got stepping stones, if you've got brick patio, that's where slugs tend to migrate is under there. And then they come out at night and eat your plants. Uh, you can always do the slug test, which is just taking a low dish, putting a little bit of beer in there. If you catch a lot of slugs the next day, you know you got a slug problem. That's not gonna be your solution using beer, using salt, those aren't gonna be your solutions. Uh, but the granular product is, guess what? Spinosad um, and your, um, your um, traditional method, I think, is Bitrix, uh, which is like one of the most bitter substances known to man. So you got to be careful with that one. So the traditional method is not designed for your vegetable garden. Your organic one is. But if you've got issues with slugs, we've got two great solutions. Um, so you can come in and check those out. And they're very easy to use. They're granular products. You just sprinkle them around your plants, kills them as they, and they're attracted to it. So they're attracted to it. They go to that granular, they get into it, and then it kills them. So it's a great way to control those slugs. And slugs can be pesty. That's, that would be your specific one that you probably always want in your medicine cabinet, for sure. All right, so on the repellent um, side, it's also good to have a liquid around. So this is my deer uh, repellent, but it works great for rabbits as well. I've got specific ones for squirrels. I've got specific ones for rabbits, snakes. We've got you covered. And then, of course, we've got just your all-purpose animal repellent. But specific to what you might have. I have deer, so I always have a deer repellent. Now, this is in my medicine cabinet for sure. I love this product. This is a systemic repellent. 
So if you have deer, rabbit issues uh, that are eating your orna ornamental plants, we don't want to use this on an edible. Remember, systemic is not used for edible plants. Um, but this is a great product. It's a granular, just like a plant food. One capful equals one square foot area. So I can take a one square foot area, like a hosta or you know my pansies. So I can go out there and treat those and it lasts for a year. So as long as that plant does not double in size in a year, I can use this. It's a really, really easy one. Um, so my systemic repellent is my go-to. It's capsaicin, it's completely safe, it's completely organic. The way it works is the root system absorbs that capsaicin. So if you go to your hosta and you break your leaf, about two or three weeks later, you should smell that hot pepper, that capsaicin. And you can smell it when you open up this jar. It's got that little bit of that hot pepper smell to it, but it's not bad. So it's pleasant, it's easy to use, and it stays in the plant. It doesn't hurt the plant, stays in the plant, and whenever anything eats those, including voles, stays in the root system as well. So if you've got vole issues, this is a great option. But systemic repellent, really, really good. But I always have my liquid, because if I apply this, I got two to three weeks where I've got to cover that plant from getting eaten by my deer. Um, so I always have a liquid. And then sometimes I just like to spray the deer, deer repellent out there um, on some plants that sometimes they just nibble on. I've got a bunch of viburnums that I planted a couple years ago um, and they started nibbling on them this year. And I don't know why, um, but I went out there and sprayed them the other day just because I wanted to kind of protect them and make sure they didn't get into them too bad. They actually nibbled on some of my figs the other day. So I got to go out there and spray it. So it's always nice to have the liquid around and sometimes they're hungry and they're looking for certain things and they're not quite sure. So they nibble on it and this kind of keeps them away. So I always have a liquid around and I always have my systemic as well. <clears throat> All right, so those are my repellents. Great for your vegetable gardens out there too. If you're worried about squirrels, rabbits, those types of things getting in there, get yourself an animal repellent. It's really, really good to have for your vegetable garden. Um, all right, so Wendy, I think I saw you had another question. The last couple of summers, I found uh, whitish fungus in potting soil on top or even deep inside. I think it may not be harmful. Is there something that will kill or prevent it? Wendy, yes, there is. I mentioned that Consan earlier. So Consan uh, works on, uh, it says right on the label, kills toadstools. So it kills fungi. Um, so most likely that would work. I don't know that you need it though, Wendy. What I would do, Wendy, is I would take your potting soil um, that, you know, I have that issue too sometimes. I, I have stacks of potting soil. That's one of the things that I would keep in my so-called medicine cabinet. I store it outside. I don't really want to store it inside. I don't want it to get too dry. It gets way too wet outside. It's, you know, a necessary thing. What are you going to do? If it gets too wet though, what I usually do is the day before I use it, I'll take it, I'll put it in my wheelbarrow, I'll loosen it up a little bit with a shovel pitchfork, um, and I'll let it try and let it sit out in the sun, Wendy. And that usually kills that stuff right off. You know, sometimes I've even seen like the brown fungus in there. Um, sometimes you get different looking things in there. I'll usually open it up. Sometimes you've got a lot of critters crawling around in there. Take it out, put it out in the sun, let it bake in the sun for a little bit, dry it up a little bit, makes it easier to use if it's too wet. So Wendy, I would try that first. The Consan is really a weird kind of product. Uh, we really don't sell a ton of it. Um, it's really more for growers. Uh, it actually is an algicide um, and it'll kill some funguses, but it's a really specific product. So I don't know that you need to get that Wendy. Um, I would try that method, just letting it dry out in the sun, see if that works for you. Um, all right, and most likely that's not gonna hurt the plant uh, because fungi really eat dead growth. So dead vegetative growth. Uh, when we're talking about mushrooms type of fungi. I know I say fungus on plants a lot, but that's not kind of different, different issue. They're feeding off of dead uh, decaying wood matter. And so that's where your fungi are coming from. And that's what's in potting soils is, you know, bark material. And so as that bark breaks down, mushrooms can grow. Um, all right, so next is going to be my plant foods. So I don't have a whole lot here actually, surprisingly. Um, you know, for my lawn people out there, I don't really store lawn fertilizer necessarily. Um, and you know, I, I'm never gonna need that in a pinch. I know when to apply it. I'm gonna apply it every fall for my fescue. I'm gonna apply my St. Augustine weed and feed, you know, in the summer months, my classic lawn food. So when you need to apply your lawn food, just come in and grab a bag, go home and apply it. So I don't typically keep that in my medicine cabinet. So uh, for my organic gardeners and for my uh, vegetable gardeners, we've got you covered. And I'm not gonna say, you know, you always gotta have a certain product. I probably should have gar grabbed Garden Tone, which is one that I typically have around. But these are our green leaf plant foods. Of course, you've probably seen me show these a lot. My traditional one, I always have this around. My boxwood, my gardenias, my azaleas, my hollies. I absolutely love this stuff. You see results pretty instantly. Within a week or two, you'll see results. And it continues to feed 
for another two to three months. So it's a nice slow release, strong fertilizer. It's great, 1248, my go-to all the time on my ornamental plants. For my edible plants and for my herbs and my vegetables, um, I use my green leaf organic. This is a 824, so it's much higher in nitrogen than most organic fertilizers, which is why I love this one. Great plant food for your organic gardeners, really good for your indoor plants as well. Now this is derived from turkey meal, just like a spomus from chicken meal. Um, this has uh, got turkey in it, so if you've got household dogs, uh, cats, then they might get into it. So you might try a traditional method or you might go to liquid. Um, and liquids, I don't use a ton of liquids, but if I were going to use a lot, would be my Schultz plant food. This is really awesome. The thing I like about this is a 10, 15, 10. So it's very, very kind of even ratio. It works great for all indoor plants. Really, really easy to use. They make this Schultz for cactus. So if you're a big succulent grower, you might like that. Again, everybody's cabinets are gonna be different, uh, but this is a really, really good one to have around. It's easy to use, seven drops in a quart of water. So I'll just apply that to a quart of water and I can go water my house plants and it works great. Do this every so often. It really, really helps your indoor plants, but outdoors it works great too. But if you need a liquid in a pinch, you need it real quick, $4.99, you can't beat it. It's a great one to have around. If you want a little bit more of a high powered, Water soluble is gonna be a little bit stronger. So this is a 20, 20, 20. It's a basic all purpose water soluble. So you're talking about a liquid feed here, but it starts off as a powder. You just mix this with your water, it uh, dissolves, and then your whatever you water with that is gonna be really, really uh, you know, benefited from a much higher concentrated formula. So 20, 20, 20, it's a really good one. And then I always have my blooming and rooting. If you haven't tried this, you should get some, it is absolutely awesome. Hanging baskets, right? They start to kind of fizzle out a little bit on you. Then you give it a little bit of trim, use my blooming and rooting, why? Look at that middle number. It's a 58, 958, eight. So it is nothing but blooming and rooting formula. It's nothing but forcing roots and forcing blooms. Uh, so it's a really, really good one. You actually see a, a picture of a tomato plant. So if you're struggling getting tomatoes or cherries on your cherry tree, you need phosphorus, you need blooms, and that's what this does. And so it's really, really fast acting. It's really, really quick. It's great for your annuals. I love it for my annuals. So mix this into your ratio. Uh, so I always go out, I, I use my traditional green leaf on my petunias and stuff like that. I mix it right into the container and then I'm out there with my blooming and rooting a couple weeks later and keep it going. And then in the summer, I do it again because that's when they tend to kind of fizzle a little bit on you and this is a great solution. So I always have this laying around. It's a really, really good one. High power uh, bloom and root, really, really good one. And then of course, you gotta have Biotone Starter. This is my new root stimulator. I still sell the liquid root stimulator. I still love that product for certain applications, but I always have Biotone Starter around because this is what I'm gonna put in every single hole whenever I plant every single plant, whether it's a vegetable, herb, perennial, annual, house plant, uh, in, uh, tree, shrub, whatever I'm planting, I'm using Biotone Starter. It's amazing the results. I didn't believe it at first. Once I started using it, it's absolutely amazing. If you don't believe me, try it. You know, get, get a bag, try one plant with it, one plant without it. You'll see the results in about two or three weeks. It's absolutely amazing. So Biotone Starter is the new starter fertilizer. It's got beneficial bacteria, mycorrhizae, these little beneficial in, uh, organisms that attach themselves to the root system of your plant, can live with it for its entire, the entirety of its life. Uh, they form a symbiotic relationship. One takes what it needs and it gives back what the other needs. So it's a really, really good one. Biotone Starter, it's awesome. Loaded with beneficial bacteria, mycorrhizae. Really, really good one. All right, um, let's see, is that, that's kind of my plant foods. I mean, those are the ones that I always have around. Um, another one that kind of works in there is Super Thrive. Now, you'll probably hear me talk about this a lot. Everybody that I've ever talked to that has tried this, they absolutely love it and they swear by it. You know, houseplant enthusiasts love this product, but everybody should love this product. It is absolutely amazing. It's one that I always keep around. Uh, Super Thrive is completely, uh, uh, it's, it's not a plant food, so that's why it's kind of weird to be in this category, but basically what it is is a vitamin supplement. It's a way to kind of take the shock off of a plant. Think of like steroids, you know, you get a rash, you get poison ivy, they give you a steroid cream. Takes the shock out, kind of really helps your, your skin kind of uh, treat, treat itself and kind of revive. That's what Super Thrive is, it's steroid for plants. So it's gonna take the shock off of a plant. So a lot of times customers come in, as I mentioned, 
I don't know what's eating my plant. Well, here's an animal repellent. I don't know what, you know, I, I didn't bring it in, but it could be a fungus, it could be an insect. Triple action. You know, we don't know the 100% answer, but we're gonna fill up your medicine cabinet with solutions that we think you can use that will help. And then once you get us more information, we can get specific. But Super Thrive is a good one. You know, I, should I feed it? I don't know, it just seems like it's struggling. You know, it, I don't see any insects, I don't see any disease, nothing's eating it. It's just not doing really, really well. Well, instead of feeding it, which can actually compound the problem and make it worse, you're trying to force it to grow when it's struggling, it's just having a hard time. That's where Super Thrive comes in, it's awesome. It goes a long way, this is a little eight ounce bottle, a little four ounce bottle, but it goes a long way. It's like a, a teaspoon full per gallon. It's super, super concentrated. Uh, it's got kelp in there, but it's a vitamin solution and it's awesome. And now they make it in a foliar spray too, which I absolutely love. So great options, something you should definitely have around is this little guy. I, I show it to everybody. I know a lot of people here at the garden center always have it sitting at home. It's this little bottle, little tiny little bottle, but it's basically a cap full. So just this little cap right here, full into a gallon and treat your plants. And you can always put a little bit more, it's not gonna hurt it. Bonsai growers love this because bonsai are constantly stressed out plants, right? They're all, you know, they're, they're tight, their root system's tight. Sometimes we're doing root cuttings on them and this takes the shock off. It's not gonna give them all the nutrients they need, so it's not gonna give them their nitrogen, their phosphorus, their potassium, but it's gonna give them a way to take that shock off. Super Thrive is gonna be a number one. If I had to pick four products that I was gonna have in my, in my, my medicine cabinet, Triple Action, Super Thrive, they're definitely a part of that group. Um, all right, so those are my plant foods. Let's see what else I got here. Um, I think that covers me on my plant foods. All right, so now we've got to apply some of these things. I gotta get this, uh, let's see, get my hose in. I gotta get my horticultural oil spread. So I need, I need a hose, I need to get it out there, right? So you gotta have a hose around. So if you don't have a hose, you need to get this one. It's called Zero G. It's the only hose I use anymore. It is absolutely awesome. It's lightweight. It's not one of those pocket hoses, those retractable hoses, which don't really last very long. But it does, So it doesn't retract, but it's super durable. It's very strong, and it's very, very easy to use because it's lightweight. So I absolutely love this hose. Of course, all plants need water. Got to have a watering wand. I always mention this whenever I talk about this product. If you see us using it here at the garden center, what do we do every day? We have to water our plants every day. Every single hose has a water, watering wand attached to it. it has this great um, uh, diverter at the end that really helps kind of uh, have the flow come out in a nice shower so you're not gonna disrupt your soil a whole lot. It's got an on and off valve down at the bottom which really makes it easy so that when you're watering you can turn it off real quick if you need to answer your phone, if you need to go run and get your kids something. Uh, this is a great option. The DRAM watering wand, it's my number one go-to watering device. It's on every hose here at the garden center. It's in all of our markets. It is awesome. So you definitely gotta have one of these. While we're on the watering, watering cans are super important. I used to hate watering cans, I'll be honest. I rarely had any watering cans. I did everything with my wand and everything with a hose. Well, then I started growing indoor plants. I needed a watering can, right? So I went and got a watering can. <laughs> and then I realized, man, this thing's hard to fill up in my sink. Um, so I kind of started hating watering cans again. Well, then I went and got a little watering can. Now this doesn't hold a lot of water, but it's great for your indoor plants. And so I definitely recommend having all sizes of watering cans. You can make it nice and ornamental with a nice silver watering can that you can display on your shelf. You can get a little cheapy plastic watering can. That's perfectly fine. And I still have my big watering cans and I love it. I think I'm up to three watering cans like this outside because sometimes I don't need to water the whole yard and I don't feel like dragging the hose out. And I've got one pot that's looking a little dry and I need to go water it. Then I need my big watering can. Indoors, all house plants, I always tell people when they're talking about watering your house plants, don't get on a schedule. Don't water all your plants at the same time. Now I bring a lot of plants, my indoor plants to my sink, water them there. But sometimes again, you're in a pinch, you need to water real quick, you're going out of town, I don't feel like doing all of that, I just need to get some water to it. This is a great option, it's nice and small, it's easy to use, it's got this great rounded end to it, so it's really nice and easy to pour. Um, it's a great option, there's lots and lots of different small watering cans. But you need to have watering cans, surprisingly. I was forced and I figured out that I did. Um, another watering device might be a mister. For years I said to myself, these are just ornamental, I had lots of people that collected them. Um, and of course, for tillandsias and different types of plants that you want to mist, yes, it works great. But we've come to find that misting actually is not bad for plants 
for indoor plants that need more humidity. Um, so misting is actually a great option. Um, and if you ever have questions of which plants to mist, I probably wouldn't ask me necessarily. I can't always remember all that information, but come into our house plant people and, and, and talk to them. You know, things like African violets don't want to be misted for sure. Uh, succulents don't necessarily want to be misted, but orchids, uh, tillandsias, bromeliads, uh, even some of the aeroids love to be misted. And so this is a great option to have a mister around to help apply some of that water. I've got misters now. I've got watering cans, all these things that I never thought I would need. Um, all right. Another one for my vegetable gardeners out there is, and really for any kind of ornamental gardener, even indoor gardeners, sometimes plants break, bend, start to get a little bit worried. You got to be able to stake them, right? So you always need to have some stakes laying around. This is a very inexpensive thing to have around. $9.99 for 25, I think. The 20, 25 bamboo stakes. Now you can cut these to different size. I love this four foot size because you can cut them down if you need to make them smaller, but they're big enough that you can use for a tomato plant. If it starts to lean over, oh, I forgot, I gotta get my tomato cage. I haven't done it yet, but I got a bamboo stake and I can go stake it up real quick. So always have some stakes laying around. It's really, really important. And then another one of my favorite products is my stretch tie. Absolutely love this stuff. This is 150 feet. I've probably only purchased two or three rolls. I shouldn't tell you this. Two or three rolls in my life. It lasts a long time. It stretches with the plant. Don't use zip ties. Don't use twist ties. Don't use twine. Don't use any of those things. You need something that can flex with the plant. If you plant a tomato plant, you know that little tiny stem that you have right now is going to get pretty good size throughout the year. So you got to have something that's going to stretch with the plant. And twine and zip ties and twist ties, none of those are going to work. This is the only one that stretches with the plant. It is absolutely a must for all you gardeners out there. You got to get this. Whether you're, you get the stakes or not, if you got something on a trellis, uh, a vine on a trellis, you can tie this to it. You never have to worry about it because it's always going to stretch with the plant. So get yourself some stretch tie. It's $4.99. It's inexpensive. It is absolutely awesome. So get yourself some of that. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, you got to have a pair of gloves. You gotta have some pruners. You all need pruners, right? Love pruners. The only reason I wanted to show you these was I always love to have a pair of pruners that have a small point to it. So like I love these little dram pruners. Uh, these have a really, really fine point to it, so you can see, which is really great for harvesting vegetables, getting into little tight spots. Um, so I always like to have a small pair of pruners. I mean, of course, we're gonna have our basic bypass pruners. Uh, you can use scissors, of course, uh, but this is a great option. I always have a pair of these. I've always got my straight up bypass pruners that I can cut branches and limbs off with. And then, of course, gotta have a nice pair of gloves so that we can go out there and protect our hands. And then the last thing is a couple of random weird things. Um, maybe not weird, but tools that I always have or something that I always have around. This is my three-way meter. So this is as a pH meter. It's got a light and moisture meter in it as well. So it's really, really easy to use. And it's not 100% accurate. It's not going to be the most amazing thing that you've ever used, but it's good in a pinch. I need to water. Do I need to water this plant? It looks like the soil is moist. Let me check it. You know, I'm checking with my finger. You got your best tool right here but maybe you're kind of a little worried. So this is a great option because plants wilt when they have too much water and they wilt when they don't have enough water. And so sometimes you just don't know. And this gives you kind of another you know, person there, another you know, advice seeker that will tell you what it is that you're looking for. And so this will help with your moisture, it works great for moisture, gets you in the range for pH, um, and it helps for your light too. Hey, I wanna buy this indoor plant. You know, it says it needs medium light. Let me put this meter on there, check it. Oh, it says low light, so maybe I need to move it a little bit closer to the window. So it's a great one to have around your three-way meter. It's awesome. For my indoor people, my indoor plant people, as well as outdoor, uh, sometimes you need a plant nanny, right? So things are opening up here soon. We're going to be able to travel and do other things, hopefully very soon. Um, the, you might need to water your plants, and I use these even because maybe I have a planter that's a little bit further off in the distance. I don't like to drag the hose there and I don't mind a wine bottle sticking in it. This is a great option. It's a clay spike. Clay is porous. So when the water goes in and it, the soil around it is wet, then the pores close. But then when the soil dries out, they open up and the moisture comes out of the wine bottle. So it's a great way to water planters. You can use it all the time. I use mine year round for sure. Um, 
but you can also use it in a pinch when you're going out of town or maybe you're going to be gone for a day or two or you got to go take care of mom or something then this is a great option plant nanny water spike it's just the spike in this one there's also for my i use this a lot in indoors you can use it outside too uh, but this is my plant saver made by blue mott um, it's a really, really cool Australian company that came up with this. They've actually been around for a long time, but basically same idea, clay concept, clay spike, same thing, porous, when it isn't, um, when it's moist around it, then the pores close, when it dries up, when the soil dries up, it releases moisture. But this works through a siphon, basically. So what you get is you get this tube that's all wound up on here and you wind that off so you can put a basin of water somewhere. So you can take a bowl of water, so let's say you're going on a vacation, you can put three of these around a big planter, put them all into a big bowl of water, you know, it starts your siphon, it's got instructions, it's real basic, it's real easy, but basically you can just put these in there and then that way you got a bigger reservoir of water. Rather than just a wine bottle or a two liter Coke bottle, um, you can use a big bowl of water if you need to. And it also looks cool, I think, for houseplants. I love these for houseplants, um, especially things that always say evenly moist, like ferns that don't really want to dry out then this kind of will help keep it a little bit more evenly moist for you. And so what you can do is have a nice decorative glass bowl, drop your siphon into it, and then put your clay spike in, and it's as easy as that. Uh, some specific directions are right there on the back. You can buy them as singles, you can buy them in a three pack, and they make a jumbo as well. So these are always good ones that I always have laying around uh, in case I'm like, ooh, I'm going away. I'm worried about this one plant. It, ha it hasn't been doing real well. It seems to want a lot more water. I need to replant it. I haven't gotten to it. You always can resort to this. And then I think this might be one of my last ones. For people out there that are planting on propagation, I always have some rooting powder around. This is a rooting hormone, basically. It's a powder substance. You can see it right in there. It's just a white powder. Basically, you can take your cutting, you cut it at a 45 degree angle, dip it in water, dip it in your rooting powder, and you can root your plants. I also love it because sometimes I've got plants that I'm like, oh, you know, I might be leaving this home, or I really love that plant, I wanna try and propagate it. And this is one thing that you're definitely gonna need. So for people that are out there propagating, I'm sure this is in your medicine cabinet already. Uh, for indoor people, people that are growing indoor plants, you might consider getting some of this. But rooting powder is something that a lot of us have in our medicine cabinet. It's a really, really good one. Last thing I'll show you, a measuring cup, right? So this is a really, really good one. Uh, I love having measuring cups around. Uh, this one's made by Fertilome and High Yield, so it's got specific things on there. But basically, it's tablespoons, teaspoons, and ounces. And so you need to know that information when you're mixing up your concentrate into your pump sprayer or whatever it might be. Always have a measuring cup in your uh, medicine cabinet. And I think that pretty much covers, oh, last one. This is kind of a weird one, but for my indoor gardeners, for uh, houseplant enthusiasts, then you might need to have a portable grow light handy. You know, I've got this plant, I thought it was gonna do well in this location, but I don't really have anywhere else to move it, but it needs more light. Having a day spot grow light is a very, very good option. It's a clamp light, it's very easy. You can just clamp it onto something nearby. You can bring over a small shelf or something, a uh, coat rack or you know even a lamp. You can just attach it right to the lamp and have this shine down on your plant. You plug it in. It's a great way to get some light to a plant that might need it uh, in a quicker kind of time frame. A lot of people that grow like tomato seedlings and stuff like that, you might need a little bit of a light source because, hey, you know, I thought it was going to be warm enough to go plant, but it's not. So these plants are getting bigger. I need a more reliable, bigger light source. This is a great option too. So it's nice to have one of these in a pinch as well to help get you some light that you might need, some more sunlight. Um, all right, so I think that pretty much covers it. I don't think I've really missed anything. I think I've covered pretty much everything that I have in my shed. Now I've got some other specific things that I use uh, all the time, but those really are some of my basics. I gotta have my stretch tie, gotta have that. Uh, gotta have a pair of pruners, gotta have my triple action, gotta have my super thrive, my green leaf, maybe a couple bags of potting soil in the back, a little bag of grass seed, my weed slice. I mean, I've got all these little things that I've collected over the years, and now I'm consistently getting them every year because I'm using them. You know, triple action out there every spring season. It's not too late if you haven't done it. It's a great time to go out there, just do preventative measure, go out there and spray everything with triple action. It's a great, uh, reliable thing that you can do to get some of those things knocked out early. I mean, you know, funguses and insects are out there, you know, starting to brew. Um, and so getting them while they're young and while they're small is a great option to kind of prevent a lot.